Welcome back. Today, very important day, we are going to talk about trigonometric functions. Remember, from last lecture, we saw that a point in the plane is two times two types of coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates and the polar coordinates. You see, if you have a point, if you have a point P on the plane, then you must have uh, as we saw, uh, co coordinates x and y and polar coordinates r and theta. The same point, two types of coordinates. That means that this thing must be related. Okay? And today, this is what we're going to explore, to understand this connection. Okay? This is how we're going to start, and then we are going to apply it you're going to apply it to the triangles to see how what what does this has to do with triangles we are going to see today okay so let's start let's start with our definition the def the, the connection let's see the connection you see in general in general you have the connection between r and theta r and theta and the coordinate x and y but right now, let's just focus on, on this very special case. When the r, the radius, the radius of the point from the origin, the radius, is 1. Let's see the connection between 1 and theta and the value x and y. We are going to make a definition. Okay, the definition for this situation, let's call it the trig gonometric functions okay for this case let's see let's start with the sine function the sine function assigns your point one theta its coordinate a y coordinate while the cosine function will assign to this power coordinates the x coordinate okay let's make a definition The sine function assigns numbers in R, the real numbers, numbers between minus 1 and 1. The name of this mapping is called sine, which assigns numbers theta belonging to R to numbers sine theta belonging to minus 1 and 1. What sort of operation is this, sine acting on theta? is given geometrically by two, three steps. Sine theta is 1. Draw reference frame and the unit circle. Let's make the step right here. Draw the reference frame and the unit circle. I will recall the unit circle means the circle with radius 1. So from here to here is 1, from here to here is 1, and so on. So the first step is done. Second step. Measure along the arc of what? The unit circle. The distance theta. Remember, the value of theta tells you numerically, the number, the number theta tells you the distance along the unit circle. We re recall from last second, theta is the same thing as s, the distance along the arc, as we saw last lecture. So, if we are given a given theta, we are going to mark theta here, along the arc. Here it is. You measure it, you start from here, this point, this point, you start measuring, you can use a string, for example, a string, and when you reach theta, the number theta, you stop and you mark P. Let's mark P. P is here. Here it is, P. Now, the second step is done. Third step. 
measure the height of the point. Measure y. With respect to the reference frame, so what's the, the height? The height is the, 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 the distance, this distance, okay? So you mark here, it's y, okay? And that's it. The sine, akino or theta, you follow these three steps, and the output is y, the number between minus 1 and 1. You can already see why this is between minus 1 and 1, because the radius of the circle is 1. So the maximum height that this point P can have is 1, or minus 1, okay? Okay, what about the cosine, the cosine te of theta? It's almost the same, almost the same. The step number 1 is exactly the same. The step number 2 is exactly the same, and about 3. 3, instead of measuring, measuring the height, you measure the x-coordinate, measure x. So you come here, introduce the re reference frame, introduce the unique circle, measure the arc, mark the point P, and now measure x. x is this distance. Okay? And that number that you get is what you call cos theta. Okay? Is this clear? I hope you can see, because you might find this strange. Because when you usually think about functions, you think about the formula. For example, f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Okay, here's a function. You have no question about it. Okay. But this is weird. This is three steps. But notice, eh, writing this way or writing these, step number one, multiply x by x. Step number two, add one. Okay. Isn't it, f isn't it following these two steps the same thing as this? Okay. It's just a different notation. Of course, this is much better because it's shorter. But essentially, the idea is the same. You see? When you have a function, in general, a function assigns elements of the set to uh, elements of another set. Now, you can make this connection many different ways. You can specify the connection. For example, give a table. If you have a table, you assign, this is the numbers of one set, this is the number of, of, of the other set, and each row of the table gives an assignment. Or instead, instead of giving an assignment, you can just give explain. You just explain the procedure that you would follow to make that assignment. Okay, but you, you can ma do that in many different ways. Like this, or like this. But the point is, there is an assignment. In the case of trigonometric functions, sine and cos, you also, uh, following this procedure, can associate a number theta with a number x or y. Okay? So this is a good function. Okay? Let's move on. Notice that when you mark this point P, you can also mark the line that passes through P. Is the line. That line has a slope. The slope is given, as usual, by the ratio of a, a variation along the x-coordinate, uh, a ratio of the variation along the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate. In this case, you know the point P, the point P has coordinates x and y, but x is just is a variation along the x-coordinate, x or, or, uh, uh, axis, and the y is just a value along the y-axis, so the ratio y over x is your slope of this particular line. Okay, so that means that you can imagine now, you can imagine a function that associates the angle with what? With the slope, okay? Let's make that definition. Let's call it the tan, tangent. It associates numbers of r except some points. Let's make it r tilde, 
because not all R works. R tilde is mapped into the numbers, uh, the numbers in R, and each angle value theta belonging to this set is mapped into 10 of theta. Okay? What sort of mapping? How do, how do we proceed to make the, that association between theta and tan theta? Okay, by definition, tan theta is the ratio. It's a slope. It's a slope. It's a slope. It's so it's sine theta divided by cos theta. Okay? It is okay. It's a good function. We'll wait to explore this better, this R tilde. But I, I give you a clue already. Because notice, the cos theta is in the denominator. So it must be exist problems when the cos theta actually gives zero. Because when you divide a number by zero, you get problems. That's what it means. So you have to avoid, in the domain of your function, you have to avoid exactly those theta that will make cos zero. But right now, let's just put that to, to the side this for another, another, another lecture. Just, just focus on this. Tan theta gives you the slope, okay? Defined by sine theta, cos theta. This is okay. Let's make more observations. Because our functions are giving us, are giving us the coordinates of points belonging to the unit circle. So P is stuck in this thing. But what about the other points? Let's see. Let's see the other points. This, you don't need this. Let's draw again our reference frame, our circle, unit circle. So this is one. And now let's mark a new point, a point right here. What about that point? That point also belongs to another circle. You see? It belongs to an another larger circle. Like this. Okay? Recall, you can define, you can define the angle. You can define this angle. The angle starts here, crosses that point. That point S coordinates x and y. Not those, another x and y, any x and y that, that, that you like. Okay, I don't know what they are. There's some numbers for this thing. Okay. What do you know about this? Well, I'm going to give you the answer first. I'm going to give you the answer. Because if I ask now, uh, if I ask now, what's the coordinates of this point? The coordinates of this point is cos theta sine theta, right? Because this is the unit circle, and cos theta gives the x coordinate, and y, y, the y coordinate is sine theta. So this is for this point. You know the coordinates of this point, but I'm asking you about this point, which f it's farther, it's farther. So it belongs, in fact, to a, a circle of radius r. So it's r times farther. So you write not cos theta sine theta, you write r cos theta and r sine theta. Okay? This is the answer. The coordinates of this point is r times larger. Why is that? I'm saying this, but why is, it, why is that? Let's just look at it. This point belongs to this triangle. Okay? But you know something very important about this triangle. What it is? It's called the Pythagoras theorem. And the Pythagoras theorem tells you that x squared but y squared, these numbers, must be equals to the length of the hypotenuse. But the length is r squared. Okay? Can you see? Let me divide the, the left-hand side and the right-hand side by r. 
Why? Because r can, is not zero for sure. So you have x divided by r squared plus y divided by r squared equals to 1. Can you see? Just divide, incorporate in the, the power. But look at what this means. This, is, this means that x divided by r belongs to the unit circle. Right, can you see? Because this is just a sum length, or squared, along the x direction. This is sum length, y divided by, uh, by r, sum length along the y direction, squared, but equals to 1. So x divided by r must be cos theta. Can you see? And y divided by r must be sine theta which in turn implies implies what we have here. The x-coordinate rearranged, you just multiply this by r, it's r cos theta, and y is r sine theta. Can you see this? I hope you can see it, because this is very important. In just one, one single derivation, you just realize two things. Very important. First, Cos theta can also be computed by this ratio, x divided by r, x divided by r, you see? Or the sine of theta can be computed by y divided by r, r divided by r. Moreover, the x coordinate of this point must be r cos theta and y must be r sine theta. You see? Now you have two ways. You have two ways of looking at cause and sign. You have their definitions. Their definitions say that cos theta must be the coordinate on the point P belonging to the unit circle, and the y coordinate is the sine theta, but that number is the same number as the ratio of x divided by r. Okay? Of y divided by r. Can you see? So we have two ways of, of dealing with this, okay? Okay, this is very important. And only with practice, uh, you can actually uh, put, uh, put to truly understand this, okay? So, right now, you have just, you have just established our mappings. If someone gives you a point P, with some coordinates r and theta, you can immediately convert this to Cartesian coordinates because that's the answer here. So this is transformed into r cos theta and r sine theta. So this is a bridge, Re remember. This is the bridge I was talking about. We have the point P, the point P has some coordinates r theta, the point P has some coordinates x and y, but the association between these and these, the conversion, you, you see, you almost, you have a name R theta and now you are converting that name into another name, which is given by this, okay? X and Y are given by these numbers, okay? So this is the conversion from polar coordinates to Cartesian, okay? I hope this is clear for you. I really hope. Because in general, uh, this is the general. That's, wh that's what I mean. This is the general, the general uh, idea. Okay, let's no now relate. Let's now relate what we learned so far with triangles. Let's see. The first key observation. The first key observation is that. Every single time, every single time that you assign P in the plane, you have a triangle. What triangle? If you mark this point, you have this triangle. If you mark this point, you have this triangle. If you have this point, this point has these coordinates. If you mark this point, it has these coordinates. But how are these related to these triangles? You see? So that means you can now almost see the cosine and sine can be now interpreted 
from a different point of view, from the tip point of view of a triangle. What the triangle says about these, uh, about these, about these functions. Just, just look at what the picture tells you. If the this this triangle, the large one, oh, let let's take the small one. The small one tells you the following: the hypotenuse has length one. I will copy to make this more clear. Length one. The height is sine theta, and the the base of the triangle is cos theta. This is theta. The larger one. This point here has these coordinates, meaning that the height is r sine theta, and the base, the base, is r cos theta. Can you see now? This is how a triangle sees the trigonometric functions. It doesn't care about the circle or about the reference frame. It just cares about itself. Okay? Its height and its base. So you now can see another point of view what it means sine theta and cos theta. Moreover, recall that I, 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 I go, I'm going to draw. I'm going, I'm going to draw again because to make this idea more obvious. You see? You see, now that you relate, uh, in are interpreting the sine and cosine from a different point of view, there is some key observations that I want to I want to tell you. I will put it here. Some key observations. Just let's just look at it. Uh, let let's call it the okay. I will call it the good triangles. The good triangles. The, the good triangles. Very important idea. I will make the picture first. You have a triangle. You have three. In fact, you have three triangles. The height y0, x0. The second triangle is x1, y1. The third is y2, x2. This is uh, r1, r0, r1, and r2. I hope this you understand the picture. x0, from here to here, x1, from here to here, x2. R0 from year to year, R1 from year to year, and R2 from year to year. Okay? The angle measures theta. Meaning, when you bring this triangle up to here and measure as usual, like, like we did previous lecture, you get the number theta. Okay? But right now, let's put that to the side and just focus on the triangle. F under this context, you can say that sine theta is y0 divided by r0. That means the coordinates of this point. You just use them. You have y1 divided by r1. And you have y2 divided by r2. The same with the cosine. The cosine is very similar. So instead of the height, you use the base. So you have x0 divided by r0, you have x1 divided by r1, and x2 divided by r2. Okay? Okay. Any triangle that you see here, this is subintended by the same angle, any triangle subintended by the same angle, you can use any of these ratios. In fact, you, you can do more. And we did three. Any ratio works. You just pick a triangle, calculate the ratio, the ratios, and you are good. You get the number for the cosine theta. But remember, cosine and sine are interpreted in the unit circle. We call the definition, the origin one. So that number that you get, the number that you get on the on, on using the unit circle is the same number you get here. I'm going to give you an example. Just imagine for the moment that R1 is 1. Okay, that means this is the, the result, the result w w we start the lecture with. Sine theta is equal to y1, cos theta is, is x1, 
so this is the meaning, the meaning of cause and sign under the unit circle. Unit circle. I'm going to draw it, if you, if, if you know, don't, can see it uh, right, uh, right, right now. It's um, something like, uh, like this, okay? If you know you drew everything, okay, like this. This is the unit circle, okay? Radius one, okay? And you, this is this part that I wrote, r drew, correspond to this part. The others correspond to the other circles, okay? The key point is, you have many ways to compute this thing, okay? And, by the way, I almost forgot, what are good, the, the good triangles? The good triangles are the triangles where the interpretation is easy. In this case, the triangles with hypotenuse equals to 1 is a good triangle. So you are in this part. Okay? Let's see tangent. The tangent is, is slightly different. It has different tastes. So tan of theta is the ratio. Let me just make the picture first. I need the picture first. Otherwise, you can see what I mean. But I, okay, I, I need to make the picture like this. I know I'm drawing the circle, but I need the circle to explain something later, okay? Uh, because this is important. Let's just focus on the triangle. Just focus on the triangle right now. So you have again three triangles. Okay, can you see? One, 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 see? But now, now, now the idea is very similar, it's very similar. You see, this is the angle theta. So the tangent of theta is this ratio, which is y0 by x0, y0, x0, this one by this one, or y1 divided by this distance, which is coincides, by the way, with the radius of the circle, but let's just put the, the circle to the side, x1, y1, x1, and now y2 divided by the distance. y2 divided by the base of the triangle, which measures x2. Okay? Is this good? Now let's see the idea that I was talking about. The good triangle for tan theta is the one that makes the denominator 1. So if you choose x1, for example, equals to 1, this simplifies and just y1. So un no, for the triangle of base 1, for the triangle of base 1, this is theta, the tangent of that angle theta is what? This is what line, this is height, okay? This is tan theta. This is distance, the height of the triangle, okay? Meaning y1, okay? Now, I, I hope you can see, because it's also, also always the slope, you see? The, the line is the same, and these ratios al always compute the slope. In particular, if you use this point, which is y1, uh, one y1, then the slope is easy because it's y1 divided by 1, but y1 divided by 1 is y1. So it's just the height of the triangle. Okay? So this is the good triangle. The good triangle for the tangent is this triangle with base 1. The good triangles for sine and cos are the ones with hypotenuse equals to 1. Okay? Why? Because the denominator is 1. Okay? I hope this you, you can see this. Uh, let's see a second property, very important property. Very important property. So you, you, this is the first. Let's see the second. Second property. Rotations. Rotations are irrelevant. Recall. I will draw first, I will draw first. Just imagine, imagine you have this triangle. Or this triangle. Or this triangle. These are just, this alpha, alpha, and let me see, this is alpha. 
you see it's just a rotated version. Rotated version of the original triangle. But, if you rotate the triangle, then you are just rotating, uh, I'm sorry, if you rotate the triangle, you are rotating all the three triangles, the, the three angles inside. So the angles are congruent. Remember? Uh, congruent tr uh, angles, meaning they are just rotated versions of each other. But for congruent tr uh, angles, measure the same. So this alpha, alpha, and alpha me all measure the same. But if that is true, that means that the trigonometric functions, when evaluated at alpha here, or here, or here, are always the same. This is very important, because it means something, it means the following. For example, imagine that you have an exercise. You have an exercise with some weird triangle in this position, and you don't like it. So you just move it and put it in the position that you like. And now make the calculations from this point of view, okay? Because it's irrelevant, okay? So this is uh, the one of the first aspects. Cos, sine, and tan for these, these, and these, the same. Let's move on. Let's now think about the other property. What about obtuse? Obtuse triangles. Do you know what an obtuse triangle is? It's something like this. Or like this. Not like this, but I need to open it more. Like this. Or like this. So this is alpha, alpha, alpha. This requires some care to deal with this. Because while this is obvious, because the, the you, you can see the right, the right angle here. You can see the right angle. So you can easily see what we have seen so far, this interpretation. You can also see, but this is harder. This is harder. So the idea to compute the sine, ten, uh, sine cos and tan of this angle is to bring, to bring this, this thing to the unit circle. And now make the, 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 the right calculations, okay? I'm going to make one for, for this one. So let, let me just uh, erase this. So this is the, spe the, the special properties, uh, observations, let's, let's say. The special observations about uh, the relation between trigonometric functions and triangles. Okay. Now. Just like this. Okay, here it is. This is alpha. Okay. Now, what is cos theta? Uh, alpha in this case. What is cos alpha? By definition, cos alpha must be the x-coordinate of this point. Can you see? Is it clear? So this is cos alpha. The y-coordinate is sine alpha. So these two functions just pick the coordinates of x belonging to the unit circle. Fine. Okay? Is this okay? Now, you might be wondering now, what are the coordinates of this point? Can you see immediately? Because if this distance is r, it means that this point is r cos alpha r sine alpha 
okay? Just use what you learned so far, and if this is the unit circle, you buy it. well, the point outside is r times larger than what we have here. Okay? You see? So these r uh, cos alpha, r sin alpha, are the x, y coordinates of the point p here. Okay? I'm going to mark the, 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 the coordinates here. The that distance, that distance is this, r cos alpha. That height, I'm going to make this further. That height is that height. So this is r sin alpha. Can you see? Now, Cos alpha must be x divided by r, where x is this distance. I, I, I actually hope you can see this immediately. This is x, this is y, while sine of alpha is y divided by r. Okay? So in the case of obtuse triangles, I'll always remember, go back to the principles that you learn. Just don't invent stuff. Go back to the definitions, go back to the, the basic ideas, and now from those, try to derive your, idea, your formulas, like we did here. We just use the definition of, our, uh, of the trigonometric functions and, and just bring the outer angle to the, to, to, to the cleverly, of course, to put the thing in the reference frame and, uh, and uh, you introduce the unit circle and now uh, analyze the geometry of the thing. And you conclude that if you just forget now about this and just have this, okay, you call this side length r and you are interested, by the way, let me just... Uh, in green, in green I, I, I'm going to put r. R is in green, okay? This is R. And you are interested in, in this distance. This distance here, which will make, by the way, a right triangle, okay? Can you see where the hypotenuse is gr the green one? This distance here is this distance here, which is R cos alpha. And the height is r sine alpha. Can you see? Again, if you are in doubt, just bring the triangles to the reference frame and you use the definition of, of the trigonometric function. And from that, you can get the formulas that you like. Okay. From now, we are going to, we are going to analyze some special values some special values. You see, our function assigns numbers, numbers in R to numbers between minus 1 and 1. But so, and we are already explained how to make that association, that three-step function. Okay, but I want to make calculations, and that's why what we are going to do right now, to do some calculations. In general, you ca the calculations that you have to do, you have to use probably the computer to, you have to do use the computer to make them. Uh, but uh, for some special cases, you can do the things by hand. And that's wha what you are going to do now. So, this is, let me just bring the title, special values. Special values of cos, sine, and tan. Okay? Special values. From, from last lecture, we saw two special triangles. Two, uh, in fact, three special triangles. We are, we are going to use two. I'm going to draw them in case you didn't see. It's called the equilateral equilateral triangle, meaning the sides are the same length. 
This is A, A, and A. We saw, I, I think it, it's very easy, the angles alpha, beta, and gamma are the same. Alpha, beta, gamma, but, well, they must sum to pi. You see, this is must be pi, but if they are all the same, they must be pi over 3. Because pi over 3 plus pi, pi over 3 plus pi over 3 is pi. So these angles are, are given by these. The second triangle that we saw is an almost, is almost a equilateral. It's almost a equilateral because its base is A, its height is A, but the other side is not. <laughs> so this is a right, the, right, uh, the right angle. So because it, it's not a equilateral triangle, almost equilateral triangle, and yet it has a right angle, let's call it the equi-right triangle. Equi-right right triangle. Okay, I, I, I think this is not an official name, but let's keep for us, let's use these two very special triangles because they will unlock many of these mappings. There are two more easier ones, but let's just focus on first on the complicated ones. We are going to use we are going to use this thing to get numbers for this, this, and this. How we are we going to do this? Well, we are going to do this using the definitions. You go back to the principles. And the principle says, draw this, draw this, bring this to here. Here it is. Uh, it's not very, okay. It's not very straight, but you can see, you can see. So this is side A, A, and A. This is our equilateral, these angles are the same. Okay, fine. Now, notice that the horizontal line splits this thing in F. So you have here, what? Pi over 3 divided by 2, but pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. Okay? This angle downstairs, measured with respect to the horizontal line, is minus pi over 6. Okay? The height of this side is A over 2, because the horizontal line partitions the thing into two. So this is A over 2. What about this, 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 this horizontal line? I will draw it here. This is what we have so far. Right? A over 2. Here. This is A. And this is don't know. Well, but you can use the Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem tel tells us that A squared must be A divided by 2 squared plus whatever is left squared. So, our is given by a squared, uh, I'm sorry, uh, like this, not the other way. Okay, can you see? Okay, let's rearrange this. This is a squared minus a squared divided by 4, but this is 3a squared divided by 4. 3 a squared divided by 4, square root. Well, but this is simply square root of 3 divided by 2 times a. So this, this thing here is square root of 3 divided by 2 times a. Okay? And this is our wonderful angle pi over 6. And now from here you can use the things that we learn. What did you see? I'm going to erase this. What did, you, well, what did we see? sine of pi over 6 is the ratio, is the ratio, is the ratio of this side with this side, so it's 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is the ratio of this side by the hypotenuse, 
So it's square root of 3 divided by 2. Ma moreover, 10 of pi over 6. 10 of pi over 6, what it is? It's a ratio. This divided by this. So it's 1 divided by square root of 3, which is square root of 3 divided by 3. Okay? Okay. This is our first associations between pi over 6 and these numbers. Okay? Using our definition. Okay? So we can make a table, but I need space for that table. I need to erase this. I, I ne I'm sorry, but I need to erase this. Because I need to make a table, a very important table, which gives uh, cos uh, the sine and 10. And so far, we know pi over 6. Pi over 6. And you can just collect these numbers. Square root of 3 divided by 2, 1 half, and square root of 3 divided by 3. Okay, fine. There is more information to extract. There is more information to extract from this triangle. Okay? Um, let me... Let me see. Okay, I don't know if you... I don't know if you can uh, you see I go, I'm going to do it like this the remember this angle which is bet uh, which is uh, beta uh, is in fact pi over 3 okay this is angle is pi over 3 okay but let's rotate this thing You, you see, in case you can see, cannot see it immediately, just rotate it. Something like this, pi over 3, okay, the opposite side, square root of 3 divided by 2 times a, the adjacent side, pi over 2, the hypotenuse remains the same, a, and this is pi over 6. And of course, this is pi over 2. Okay. Okay. Everything is okay. Okay. Now you can now extract the trigonometric functions again. So sine pi over three is this side divided by this. So square root of three divided by two. Cos of pi over three is this. Divided by d, so it's 1 half. And the tangent of pi over 3 is what? Is a ratio of this by this. Okay? So it's square root of 3. Now you can fill the table again. Our pi over 3. Notice, notice that it flips. It flips because the sine now is square root of 3 divided by 2. And this is one f, and this is square root of three. Okay. Now let's move pro for the let's move move on to the icky right triangle that I raised here. The icky right triangle. Icky right triangle, like this: a, a, and hypotenuse. It is given by this. Okay. These angles, as we saw previously on the last lecture, are given by pi over 4. Okay? Sine of pi over 4 Let me just... Uh, okay. The sign is this, uh, the length of this divided by hypotenuse. But what's the hypotenuse? It's a squared plus a squared, which is 2a2 squared. You apply the square root now, you have square root of 2, right? You can see, square root of 2 times a. 
Okay, this is the length. Now you compute the ratio, which is uh, a divided by this, so it's 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 divided by, by 2. The cosine of pi over 6 is the same number, because this le measures a, so it's square root of 2 divided by 2, and the tangent, uh, I'm sorry, not pi over 6, pi over 4, uh, of pi over 4 is just 1. So pi over 4, your 45 degrees, that's what it measures, so it's square root of 2, divided by 2, square root of 2, divided by 2, and 1. Let's now focus on the last two triangles, easier ones, which is as extreme cases. It's the triangle with no height and the triangle with no base. What else? <laughs> it's a triangle with almost no height. Uh, we increase the angle, here the angle, alpha, this is alpha, now it's larger, you see, I'm drawing a sequence, you see, you see, you see the idea, when you have extreme cases, it's usually a good idea to draw a sequence of what is between the extremes, so you can better appreciate what they are supposed to mean, that's what I'm attempting to do here, I'm starting from one extreme to the other extreme, which is like this, almost no base, here the base, very small already. This keeps on going, okay? So this is extreme cases, the triangles are extreme, extreme cases, extreme yes, triangles, okay? You have a sequence, let me draw the sequence here. The extreme triangles are like this, in red, You see, you have this one, and then you have this one, and then you have this one, the intermediate ones, but the, the red are the extremes. But what can you say about the extremes? You can say a lot. For this situation, what do you think is sign of zero? Of course, alpha is not zero, but it's almost zero. But it's the ratio, isn't it? The ratio of this side with the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is the same. You see, all the triangles have the same hypotenuse, so the height tends to zero, so this is zero. The cos of theta is this side, so this side is approximated by one. You see, when this is very close, almost flat, the side is coincides with the radius of the circle, and the radius of the circle is one. The tangent of zero is a ratio, so it's zero. In this scenario, what is sine of pi over 2? Your 90 degrees. Okay? It's a ratio again of this side with this side. But notice, these two sides are almost the same length. Can you see? So this is approximately, it, it will be 1. Okay? The cosine of pi over 2 is a ratio of this side by the hypotenuse. But this is go shrinking. So it goes to 0. So this is 0. And the tangent of pi over 2. Now you have a problem, isn't it? Because the ratio of 1 with 0 is meaningless. You can also see this from a different point of view. You see, I told you previously that the tangent is a slope. It gives you the slope. So let's focus on the slope. The slope here. The slope here increases. You see? The slope the slope, the slope, is always increasing. So if the slope like this is zero, it decreases, increases, increases, so it goes to infinity. So this, this goes to infinity. We will come back to this later, when we introduce limits, okay? Because this is a new idea, new concept, going to infinity, okay? But for now, let's just use the intuitive picture that the slope just increases without bounds, okay? So this completes our table. When it's zero, cos is one, sine is zero, and tan is zero. When we have pi over two here, the sine is one, the cos is zero, and this is infinity, okay? 
very important concept. So you can see, you just fill the entire table. Now, now, when I was your age, I memorized this thing. But you won't. You, I think it would be much better if you try instead of spending time putting these in your head you just try to understand the arguments the thought process that leads to this thing because in doing so you learn many other things you learn the basic principles or to use the definitions and the basic properties that relate trigonometric functions with triangles so if you practice the argument the thought process you just repeat it a few times and not many you just repeat a few times and try to con reconstruct this thing using the equilateral triangle the equi right triangle and the extreme cases just y y this is your starting point this is in the definitions of, of the definitions and you try to reconstruct this thing a few times i think you don't need uh, to memorize it anymore because if you just forget you just know the thought process to, to come back to this, okay? It's a good, a, a good ex exercise and a good way to understand this material is to go back and do these calculations again just like I did, okay? Okay, let's now... We have still have time. Just one last... Two. Two final ideas that I want to give you which is two different f uh, laws very important laws very useful which is the law of sines and the law of cosines the law of sines law of sines Let's start from this, okay? You see, the idea is this. When you have a triangle, you have the sides, alpha and A, alpha and the side A, beta, uh, I'm sorry, beta and the side B, and gamma and the side C. What the law of sines is, goi is going to tell you is to relate angles with sides okay the idea is this i need a larger triangle and one more time just look at the arguments you, pr you probably better than memorize formulas you just drop vertical lines that make 19 degrees with the opposite side. You start with one point, you drop a perpendicular line to the opposite side. You start with this point, you drop a perpendicular line, and you stop at the other side. These lines intersect at a single point in the middle. Okay? I'm going to give them da names. So this is a side A, and I call this line H of A. This is a side B, and I call this dotted line H of B. And this is a side C. I'm sorry, I just uh, exchange. <laughs> this is B, and this is C. So this is H of C, this is H of B. Okay? No, just use the definitions, the definition of trigonometric functions. The easiest one to see is this one the h of c h of c is equal to what I, yes to side right so it must be the length of this side b you see times the sine you see sine of the angle is alpha can you see using what you've seen so far this is b times sine alpha but using the other side, which is uh, which is beta, it is a sine of beta. OK? 
Okay, it's a good exercise to to derive these things. H of a. This is the easiest one, by the way. This is the easiest because why? Because the other ones are just rotated versions of the original one. So let's see if you can do it now. H of a divides this into triangles. Okay. I'm drawing. I'm I'm going to draw them because the picture might be get confusing. Okay. Can you see? Let me just make it better for you to see this query. Okay, this makes 90 degrees here. This is your B. This is your C. Okay, this angle, the angle doesn't matter, but this ang angle matters. This is gamma. This is beta. So H of A must be B multiplied by the sine of gamma, but from this point of view, this triangle says, well, it's not, it's C times my, my sine of beta. Okay? You can now do the last one, like this. So H of B. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to draw it. So it must be, let me see. So it's gamma, so A times sine of gamma, see this triangle, this is gamma, times A, sine of gamma times A gives this distance, okay, this is the hypotenuse, and the other side is C sine alpha, C sine alpha. Now. I wrote many equations here. This is the first equation. This is the second equation. This is the first equation. This is the second equation, and so on. Let's just focus on the second equation. What can you say? You just rearrange. You just rearrange. And now what you find is that B divided by sine of beta must be A divided by sine of alpha. This is the first. Okay, can you see? Just rearrange. Here, you know that B sine of beta must be C sine of gamma. And finally, we know that A sine of alpha must be C sine of gamma. Okay? And now you can conclude a wonderful thing. First, here's the angle. This is the oppo opposite side. Here's the angle. is the opposite side. Here's an angle, alpha, here. A is opposite side. And so on. So from this you conclude, from this you conclude, that by B sine beta is A sine alpha, okay? Let me just do it like this. But B sine alpha, it's here, is the same as C sine gamma. So this is C sine gamma. And this is, my friends, the law of sines, okay? Okay? It's two equations. This and this, okay? Which, by the way, imply a third equation, by the way. Just the, the two, the two uh, the other ones, okay? So this is the, the, the law. Well, uh, what can you do with this? Well, I, I'll tell you later, okay? Let's just skip it, let's just skip it. Right now it's just a, a relation, a relation between sides and angles. But I will comment on that in the end, because I want to quickly go to the law of cosines. Okay? I want to quickly go to the law of cosines. Let's just keep this. This is very important. Law of cosines. The law of cosines. 
also allows you to relate angles with sides. Okay? I'm going to write the law first. The law says a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of the angle opposite to this side, so it's alpha. Okay? Remember, side, an angle, this side is opposite to the angle. Okay? This is the remaining side. Okay? So essentially, what this, what this thing is telling you is that you can compute the length of A from the length the B and C at the price of knowing the angle alpha. You see? You can know the length of these from the length of the other sides at the price of these. Okay? So the price is no the opposite angle uh, to A, which is alpha. Okay? Let's just prove this. It's not very difficult to prove this. Well, by the way, if you already know the way, it's easy to say this, but, but uh, the most easiest way to prove this result is using uh, vector notation. But right now, we haven't yet introduced this uh, vector notation, <coughs> so you have to use algebra. So let's, let's just draw a triangle, again. A triangle that has no right angles. By the way, please, let me just ask you, I remember now, what happens, what happens, you see, I'm saying that it's not a right triangle. Well, if it's not a right triangle, it means that alpha is not 90 degrees. But what happens if alpha is 90 degrees? You see, what happens? You see, cosine, you he appears the course of 90. I'll leave you to think about it, okay? Because you get a very important formula. Okay? Let's just focus on this. So this is alpha. Uh, this is A. Okay? This is B. This is C. So I can compute. I, I'm, I want to focus on this side. And for that, I'm going to divide this in F two right triangles on the other side, okay? So I drop this line, which is divide this thing, and divide the triangle into two right triangles, and divide, of course, C is divided into two parts. This part, you know, it's... Let me just... Uh, I'm sorry. Let me just... Uh, okay. I want to focus first on this part, by the way. It's easier to see that way. This part is B cos alpha, right? Can you see, using what you learned so far? This thing, well, is whatever it is, it's C minus B cos alpha. Is okay? It's the remaining part. Okay, now let's use the Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem for the first triangle. Uh, I, I can I have space here. The right triangle here. Uh, it's uh, uh, so this height. Let's call it h. H squared must be b squared minus b cos alpha squared, which in turn, from the other point of view, from this side, from other triangle says, well, it's not, it's given by c, uh, I'm sorry, a squared minus c minus b cos alpha squared, okay? Okay, now, if everything is all right, let's just rearrange this. So 
So let's see. You get. I don't know if you can see. We just expand this thing. We just expand this. So you have b squared minus. Let's call b squared cos squared alpha. This is the left hand side. And now I can write the right hand side. A squared minus. And now expand this thing. So it's c squared plus b cos alpha squared, but he has a minus sign, so it's minus b squared cos squared alpha. Okay. And then uh, there is a cross terms. The cross terms, right? So it must be plus twice cb cos alpha. Okay. See, when you do the cross terms, it gets a, ne a negative sign. You have a negative sign, so it cancels. It's plus. Okay. Maybe if you are difficulty have difficulty to see this, maybe you can do it more step by step. But this is the result. Now, you just isolate a. You just isolate a for one side, so you get a squared here. This thing cancels because it's on both sides. You bring. Uh, the b squared to the other side, uh, or, or the c squared to the other side, so it's b squared plus c squared, and now it is part, you subtract the same quantity from the both sides, so you have to cb cos alpha. And my friends, this is the result that we get, okay? You can do this for every side, so we have in fact three. I challenge you. I challenge you to compute by ourselves the other two, okay? Just run the argument and find this. It must be b squared something, c squared something, okay? Okay, uh, by the way, b squared something, what angle does it appear here? The opposite angle. So it's if it's, it's b, it must be something cos beta. If it's c, it's something cos gamma, okay? I'll leave you the rest to you, okay? So we have the two laws now, and what can we do with this, okay? What can we do with this? I won't give you today, I won't give you uh, numbers to compute with this thing. I think you have the exercises on the notes to do the calculations, but I'm going to give you that main idea. This is the most important thing. We have this equation, this equation. Once again, they relate size of the triangle with the angles, the internal angles of the triangle, okay? So, if you know the sides, you can compute the internal angles, you can compute, okay? And the same thing with here, okay? So the, the idea is this, it's, it's not exclusive, uh, not, not exclusive to these equations, it's a general, pro uh, general thing for every equation. The idea is this. Every single time you have an equation, you have unknowns. You have unknowns, but if you specify some of the unknowns, well, and only one thing remains, you can compute it. For example, if you know b, c, and cos alpha, you can compute a. Because that's the only thing that is unknown here. The same here. If you can compute b, uh, b and, uh, and, and, and sine and sin beta in a way, you can compute the sine of alpha. You just rearrange the thing. So every time you have an equation with unknowns, and you know every unknown except one thing, you can solve for it and do the calculation. So that's the idea of these formulas. Depending on the exercise, you have to know what you have, the givens, and you know, have to know what you want. And then you just adapt the equations as you wish. You arrange them, move them, so that you isolate the thing that you want to compute on one side and the things that you know on the other. You do the calculations with what you know, and you get the output, the answer. Okay? Okay. That's all for today. It's a lot. Once again, you have the exercises, uh, the notes and the exercises, and I wish you a good work, and see you next time. Goodbye.